This is the American Blade Works Model 1 version 5. And uh, full disclosure, it was sent to me by the maker, Michael Martin, uh, a great guy and a guest on the Knife Junkie podcast. And uh, well, when he came on the show, we spoke quite a bit about this knife. This is the, uh, the first real production knife he's worked on. And as a one-man shop, he's been able to pump out a, quite a few of these and get them in the hands of reviewers and knife enthusiasts uh, that you know and love here on YouTube, but also people who don't put up videos. I can't believe that one man is making these knives. They're quite incredible. And part of what is so incredible to me is how nimble he is as a businessman and as an engineer making these knives because uh like i said this is model version this is model one version five and uh, i a good friend of the show lavender pants sent me version three and version four to check out and there were quite a number of differences between each model but to look at them they all look basically the same now the version three i had had uh the original aluminum handle this of course is contoured and nicely textured G10. Uh, the number three had a, a liner lock and an aluminum handle and a detent that was, well, less than, less than awesome. And uh, it needed a little work, but even that version three uh, was really cool and, and had a lot of very thoughtful uh, details to it. I, for one, I'm a sucker for uh, aluminum handled knives and I thought that one did it great. And then uh, version four was a lot closer to this one with a with a slightly different flipper tab uh, located slightly differently, at least uh, according to my assessment. And uh, that one was all my card and had fantastic action. Um, this version five, I have to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what he upgraded. It was already so refined. Um, uh, besides, you know, making it a G10 handle and improving the action even more. Now this has, it's a very tight in there, but this has a nice uh, ball bearing pivot in there. You can see the space between the bearings and uh, it is growing ever smoother. Now the, the two that I borrowed from Lavender Pants, uh, thank you, sir, uh, were smoother than this one. Now they were uh, older and more used and actually uh, when Michael sent this to me he said uh, it will get smoother with time now I suspect that this media blasting that he did on this blade uh, adds to the roughness of the texture around the tang so as that as this opens and closes and a track wears in around that pivot um, some of that media blasting texture will go away and it will smooth out and it will become increasingly more smooth. But to me, uh, it's smooth enough. I'm not, uh, I don't need drop shut action and uh, this will have it anyway, I, and no doubt about it. So let's take a quick look ar around this knife. It is a drop point, fully flat ground or nearly fully flat ground. You can see a little bit of a flat right there. This is S35VN. I like how he uh, embossed it that's not the right word, um, but I like the way it's kind of uh, dug in there. What's the word? Come on, help me. What's the word? Engraved? Maybe. S35VN, a great steel we all know and love. This came, this came sharp. Now, uh, this is not the sharpest knife I have, uh, but it came very sharp, and the beautiful part is the way it's ground and how thin it gets. Sorry for the nasty dry hands. Like my wife always says, you got to moisturize, especially with an HD camera. Uh, but anyway, it's so thin behind the edge, uh, this this knife here, that uh, uh, it will, you know, with, with a little bit more sharpening. I mean, I've used this a lot through the holiday season for cutting cardboard. It did a, a bang up job. So I have a feeling it dulled a little bit. But when I get the, uh, when I get an edge back on there, um, what I'm trying to say, say is it's ground and it's set up to be a super sweet, uh, super crazy sharp slicer. It just came to me not super, super crazy sharp. Okay, whatever. That is not a scientific uh, thing, so I'm going to move on. Because you know me, I am all about science. 
And uh, so anyway, uh, I love this knife. It is not in my typical wheelhouse. This is a three and a quarter inch blade. It is, uh, uh, looks more like an EDC knife than a, than a, a tactical assassin's knife. And you know, aesthetically, I, I tend towards the tactical assassin style knife, uh, if I can say that. Uh, but, oh God, man, uh, this thing is just hits all of the right points for me, um, for EDC. Uh, it's got this beautiful uh, sculpted titanium clip. You can see it's received a little bit of the uh, kitchen counter action there. I have a tendency to lean against the kitchen counter, and that's what happens. Uh, nice big uh, hardware here. Beautifully contoured G10 handle with sunk, with sunken liners. That's a class move, Michael. I love it. Uh, for rigidity and for, you know, you don't have to see the liner, it's hidden. And that shows also a great, uh, you know, facility with milling, I'm thinking, as a total non-miller myself. So what knives does this remind me of? What knives do I, what shelf do I put this on? I put this on the same shelf with my uh, TRM Atom. It's got a similar vibe to me. It's like that um, it's that very, very EDC design knife, uh, that ordinarily on paper wouldn't appeal to me, but in hand, oh man. So these two are great knives. I love this TRM, Adam. I'm so happy I was able to, to locate one of these. Um, they're not always easy to get. They're actually never easy to get. And I was able to snag one. And now there's a, there's a whole gamut of uh, different scales you can get for it, which is exciting. Michael Martin, that might be an exciting thing for this knife. I don't know if, I, it's not really built and set up for that. This, you just remove these two screws and boom, the scale comes off. This would be a lot more complex. And you know what? That's this thing's thing. This thing's thing is a different thing. What else does this uh, remind me of? In a way, it's kind of bug out um, in that uh, it has that a similar size with the three and a quarter inch blade. This is a little shorter than that. Uh, but same sort of um, flat grind uh, that just really accelerates at certain kind of cutting, like, uh, well, cardboard cutting and um, just the kind of utility stuff that doesn't require super slender, uh, slashy kind of uh, hollow grind things. Let me show you this knife, the uh, American Blade Works Model 1 Version 5 with the old, the old paramilitary two there. That's a three and a half inch blade and um, vaunted as one of the greatest EDC blades of all time. Um, well, that's up for debate. I like this better, personally. Uh, and here it is with a Delica with that three inch, nearly three inch blade, but also a similar grind. And uh, these have similar thickness too, thickness and blade stock. Um, and the uh, the additional broadness of this blade and the full height grind makes it a little bit slimmer, uh, but uh, the American Blade Works is by no means a slouch. Now, another one I, I just wanna show that this really kind of, to me is in a similar ballpark here is the Ritter uh, Hogue RSK1. And I know there's a lot of history behind this design, but to me, they, they fill a, a similar role. Um, now this is built thicker, it's built a little more stoutly, if you will, but, uh, I'm not so sold on the fact that this would be so much tougher in, uh, out there if you needed to, you know, be using it for survival or woodland stuff. And, you know, this, the RSK1 is a folding survival pocket knife. That's kind of the concept. And, uh, I feel like this thing is stout enough really sturdy. Uh, that blade stock is thin enough to be a good cutter, but thick enough to, to be able to handle some tougher jobs. I would imagine if you needed to, I mean, look, it's the same width as this. You could horse it through stuff, no doubt. And, uh, with Michael Martin's sort of nimbleness as a knife maker and businessman, if you're out there and you discover something's wrong with this and you mention it to him, it's quite likely he'll incorporate some of those changes next time if they make sense. I mean, he's not gonna do everything everyone says, but he listens to his customers 
And that's why we're looking at a version five of the same knife. So I think that's extremely commendable. And uh, well, I think this knife is a full on winner. I love it. Michael Martin, you're doing a fantastic job. Um, and uh, keep making more of these. It'd be great to see what a, a Model 2 looks like. I think, uh, I think your work ethic and your whole concept of constant refinement is, uh, is right on. So keep it up, sir. I love your knife. And uh, I think you're doing great work so far. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, check it out when you have a chance. If you have a chance, this is the uh, American Blade Works Model 1 version 5. Check out any version you can get your hands on. It is so well worth it.